All right, let's get this show going. So one of the most difficult things for people that are struggling with insulin resistance is they have an inability to lose weight. Yes, they're able to lose weight. Sometimes we can lose weight if we go on a crash diet, if we eliminate sugar, but we're not able to maintain the results. So the inability to lose weight, the constant hunger, the constant cravings, these are all signs and symptoms of insulin resistance. Now for women, this is a big, big problem, something called polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS. It causes irregular I mean, it's, it's really a hormonal disruptor. A lot of times women get facial hair, um, lots of skin problems, skin tags, acne, and then you get this pigmentation, this darker colored skin on the folds of your neck. And this happens to men and women. Uh, we have 25-year-old, 30-year-old men right now that are walking around with zero, I mean, not zero, but literally no testosterone. Their testosterone levels are low and they're 25 years old. How's that possible, right? Mental health wise, the insulin resistance plays a huge toll. So one in five American adults right now have IBS. One in five have IBS. And almost always, if you have IBS, you have anxiety and depression. So the link between the gut and insulin resistance and mental health is undeniable. Um, There's hundreds and hundreds of research papers being done right now on it. I'm a visual guy, so let's look at some visual things. So Skin tags, skin tags around the neck, the face, the cheeks, uh, sometimes on the eyes, upper torso. These skin tags are a major sign of insulin resistance. So is the darker colored skin. If you see, sometimes we have like a darker ring around our neck, around the back of the neck, under the on the face, the cheeks, sometimes under the armpits or on the elbows. That is a sign of insulin resistance. But this one right here, this is really the kicker. So belly fat especially protruding belly, is the number one risk factor for insulin resistance. Now, all of us have fat. Healthy people have fat. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have fat. We should all have some fat. There's two types of fat, though. One is subcutaneous fat, okay? This right here, this is, oops, gosh, that was a fat pen. Uh, This is the subcutaneous fat right beneath the skin. This is the white fat, we call it. This is the fat that you can pinch and jiggle, okay? Underneath there is the visceral fat. The visceral fat is the dangerous fat because it's the fat, we call it the brown fat. It's the fat that surrounds our liver and our heart and our lungs and our organs. And when you have a lot of visceral fat, a protruding belly, this visceral fat is not soft and pinchy and jiggly like the subcutaneous fat. This one is actually more hard and firm, okay? Um, this, this, this is the ma- n- number one risk factor for insulin resistance. So inability to lose weight, constantly hungry, cravings. If you're having any of these symptoms, I want to talk about exactly what you can do. And you can do it naturally. You don't have to buy anything or pay anyone or take any injections or anything. Insulin resistance, okay? All the t- symptoms that we're talking about, the brain fog, the mental health problems, the hormonal health problems, the PCOS for women, the low testosterone for men, the belly fat, All these symptoms, okay, everything we've talked about, the acne, the skin problems, the psoriasis, all these problems, if we know that the underlying risk or or root cause is insulin resistance, is diabetes related to Alzheimer's is the question. Uh, 279 apples, 589, is diabetes related to Alzheimer's? People are calling Alzheimer's diabetes type 3, okay? Very realistic. Insulin resistance is a root cause. So all the symptoms... People are given pills and treatments, and sometimes they're life-saving pills and treatments, but they're really only to treat the symptoms for another day, right? So you take the pill today to get through the day, and then tomorrow you're going to have to take another pill to get through tomorrow, and the day after that, all the same, right? Well, if we know what the root cause is, the insulin resistance, why not address this? If we can reverse this, then all the symptoms perhaps die with it, right? So if you have any of those symptoms, you're not alone. Okay, it's not an individual problem. Gosh, if there's one thing I want to get across, this is not an individual problem. We're told that if we're struggling with our weight or our health, that we should just man up and eat less, exercise more, and if we would just, you know, exercise some self control, we wouldn't be this way. When one kid in the class is failing the class, it's often an individual problem. When every kid in the class is failing the class, it's a classroom problem. It's a systemic problem, right? 88% of American adults are metabolically unhealthy. So in this country, and I'll flip my camera back again. In this country, we have 86 million people with prediabetes. 
pre-diabetes. And you think, oh, they, they know it. They're, they're, they're working on it. They're going to get in shape. Every, no, nine out of 10 have no idea that they even have it. So we have 100 million type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetics in this country. And these 86 million pre-diabetics, they're just going to keep going. They're going to keep doing what they've been doing because, you know, they're feeling some of these things, but hey, maybe they're just tired. Maybe they are, you know, maybe they've got some cravings or whatever. They don't make any changes. They're going to be a type 2 diabetic and it's going to totally railroad their lives. Now, even type 2 diabetes, if you're struggling with type 2 diabetes, I'm going to show you some people. I'll show you right now, okay? Um, if you've seen my TikTok videos, okay, this guy right here, type 2 diabetic for over 20 years, following the protocol I'm about to show you, he lost 70 pounds, got off all of his prescriptions. All right, his name's Scott. He's from Montana. He's a great guy. I've talked to him many times. This is Jose. He's a guy from Michigan. Never met Jose in person. I've talked to him over the phone a couple of times. Following this protocol, he, in four months, has got off all of his type 2 diabetes medications, blood sugar, blood, all of his numbers are normal, thyroid problems gone, brain fog gone. Um, Jennifer had PCOS, insulin resistance, high cholesterol, has completely changed her life. She was a, she's a public health uh, expert. Like she's a, a, what do you call it? A registered dietitian and nutritionist and couldn't get rid of these problems until she figured out that it was all based on insulin resistance. Mario, never met Mario. I've talked to him on the phone a few times. He, he saw this protocol, type 2 diabetes. He was off his metformin within a week. So um, I can show you a bunch of these, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, Fatty, non-alcoholic fatty liver. I mean, it's insane. And I'll show you the protocol. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to inject yourself with whatever all the time. Now, if you're taking medications and your doctors put you on them, doctors are great people and they've worked with you one-on-one. -on -one. Keep doing what they're telling you to do. But what I'm saying is there are ways to address the root cause, the insulin resistance. And if we can attack the insulin resistance and reverse it, then you can go meet with your doctor again and your same doctor that you've been working with is gonna do a blood test on you. And when they do the blood test, the doctor's gonna say all the things that they've told Jose and Mario and, and Scott and Jennifer, they're gonna say, what on earth are you doing? How are you doing this? Okay, we got a lot of questions. What's the protocol? This is the first time I ever see you on live. I'm not on live very much. I'm a little bit scared of live, um, to tell you the truth. This is a little bit nervous for me. I'm not... Um, I'm not used to it. So how do you do it? What's, how does it work, right? I have insulin resistance, somebody says. Okay, thoughts on Monjaro. I'm not a fan of it. I don't know much about it, so I can't give you a full opinion. But um, what I do know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. But, you know, what do I know? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some protocol here that everybody should be talking about. This should have won awards. It should have been the thing that was on top of every headline. The problem is because we have 100 type 2 diabetics in America, we have a very, very big market for diabetes and insulin prescriptions. Uh, people that are struggling with high cholesterol, obesity, insulin resistance, PCOS for women, all these symptoms that we've been talking about, it's a huge market. The pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money selling drugs to treat the symptoms, right? Again, treat the symptoms. It'll help you through today, and then you have to take it again tomorrow to help you through tomorrow, and then you're on, you're on it indefinitely, right? This is to treat the root cause. And so um, because... You don't have to buy anything necessarily to do this protocol. Because of that, there's no money in it. So why would anybody talk about it if there's no money in it, right? So now in full disclosure, there are some supplements that I've been using that make this much, much easier because I'm a snacker. I've always struggled with my diet. I've always struggled with my food choices. So for people that struggle, I'll show you a way to make this easier, but you can do it without them. Okay, so let's first show you guys something that I hope y'all... No, but I'm guessing many people don't. This is white rice, right? Everybody in the world is familiar with white rice, right? What most people don't know, and if you've seen my TikTok videos, you know now, what most people don't know is that rice actually doesn't look like this. It looks like this. This is wild rice. Around the grain of rice is something called bran. Bran is the fiber around the rice, okay? Now, it's not the whole it's not the husk. The hole and the husk get thrown out. They're not digestible. The bran is important. That's the fiber. We only eat the white part called the endosperm. This is the endosperm, right? This is what we eat. Show me any carbohydrate in nature, right? You've got sugar, water, and fiber in an apple. If you remove all the fiber, then all you have is apple juice, right? Apples are healthy. 
They don't cause blood sugar spikes or crashes. They're not a problem. A da- apple day keeps a doctor away, right? If you take out all the fiber, you're left with sugar water, which does spike your glucose and insulin levels and causes you all kinds of problems. Is this on an infinite loop? That Michael guy, no, it's not an on an in- infinite loop. Sorry, I'm just getting into this and I don't want to have too many... I'll get to questions in a second. Okay, so apple juice is sugar water, right? Show me any carbohydrate in nature, and I will show you that God and Mother Nature intended for it to be packaged in fiber. Even sugar itself, packaged in fiber, right? But guess what men do? Guess what food makers, not men and women, I mean, just food makers, they take a product like this, a plant, they remove all the fiber, and they feed us products like this, right? For the last 50 years... All the fiber has been removed from our diet. I've done videos on this. Where did all the fiber go? This is a box of corn pops that I'm talking about. Guess what corn pops are made of? Of course, corn. Corn's fiber. We all know that. We've all eaten corn and seen it in the toilet the next day, right? It's pure fiber. It goes right through you. The number one ingredient in corn pops, guess what it is? Corn. Guess what's not in the cereal? Any fiber. It's been stripped of all of its fiber. And corn is not the only example. In this video, I show a a package of Uncle Ben's whole grain brown rice. No fiber in it. How is whole grain brown rice not have fiber? I did another video with millions of views called the missing fiber rabbit hole. So what? So they're taking fiber out of our food. So what? Doesn't fiber give us gas and bloated and all that stuff anyways? Well, let's just look. Okay, this is the cdc.gov, their diabetes library. Health benefits of fiber. And guys, this should piss you off. It should piss everybody off if they live in the United States or any country that's doing this. Health benefits of fiber. If you have diabetes or prediabetes, fiber is your friend because it helps with blood sugar control and weight management. It can also lower your risk of heart disease. What's the number one killer in the United States? Heart disease. And what's the number two killer? Cancer. Some cancers. Specifically, fiber helps, one, control your blood sugar. It blocks and slows the digestion of carbohydrates. It keeps your blood sugar in target range. Two, it protects your heart. It lowers your triglyceride levels and your cholesterol levels naturally. All right, I'm going to get to these comments in a second. Sorry, guys. Three, maintains your digestive health. One out of five American adults has IBS, and they're all getting depression and anxiety because of their IBS and their digestive health. The brain and the gut are connected. This is amazing for, you guessed it, Gut health. It improves gut health, fiber does. This is a big one right here. Fiber fills you up. It helps with weight management. Since fiber can't be digested, it moves slowly through the stomach, making you feel fuller for longer. Okay. Now, I'm going to connect the dots here in a second, but why would they take fiber out of the food that we're eating? Right? Why? So there's a couple reasons, and they're not all sinister. Number one, fiber makes food spoil faster. So when you remove fiber from the food, it has a longer shelf life. Well, that might be good for consumers in some way because it makes food cheaper, but it's bad for consumers in other way because number two, one of the reasons why they take fiber out of it is it makes us feel full. Fiber is incredibly satiating. If you take the fiber out of the corn pops, you'll eat and eat and eat and never feel hungry. So we'll buy more of the product, right? So let's just connect the dots real fast. Okay, so we talked about the blood sugar, we talked about the heart, we talked about digestive health, IBS, mental health, we talked about uh, feeling full, weight management. So you start to connect the dots and you're like, oh wait, these are all the problems that we have in the United States right now from a health perspective. This is insane. This dysbiosis leads to all kinds of health problems, mental health problems, skin health problems, immune health problems, metabolic health problems. We have an obesity epidemic, we have a diabetes epidemic. And you know why? It's because we took something like this and we turned it into that. We take something like this and we turn it into this. And this is not some conspiracy, guys. This is the CDC's website. I don't always like quoting the CDC, but we know what fiber does. It's right here, plain black and white, clear as crystal. You can look it up, right? So where am I going with this? I'm about to show you a protocol that I and many others have followed. It's completely changed my life. And here's the good news. You don't have to count any calories. You don't have to eliminate carbs or sugar. I eat carbs all the time. I eat them as they're intended to be, which is wrapped in fiber. Okay? And you don't have to do any kind of extreme exercise. Now, exercise is always a good thing. I'm not bagging on any of these things. I'm just saying that I failed every diet because like for keto, for example, I would cheat. 
I like carbs too much to do keto. I would cheat and then you gain weight on keto when you cheat, right? Or I would try to, you know, do a diet where I would stop snacking, but I'm a snacker. So I would struggle. And you see all these people in my TikTok videos that have, this has completely changed their life. So it doesn't require any calorie counting. It doesn't require any extreme exercise or elimination. No, you know, you can have sugar, you can have carbs, right? Um, It also doesn't cost anything. You can do what I'm about to show you for free. In full disclosure, there are some ways to make it much, much easier using a couple food-based supplements that I use every day now. And it makes it much easier if you struggle with control. Okay, animal-based diet. This is not an animal-based diet. Hey, I think animal-based diet looks great. I just struggle. Keto diet is dangerous for some people. Okay, week two, still fine tuning. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch up on all these comments in a second, but let me show you <clears throat> the protocol because that's, you know, I wanna give you value and not just talk to you in the middle. What time is it? It's getting later. Okay, so let me show, get back to my um, my showing of the protocol. So as I was saying, there was some research done about 10 years ago that because the pharmaceutical companies couldn't profit from, nobody talked about. Um, one of it you can read in a book called The Diabetes Code. It was all documented. A guy named Jason Fung, University of Toronto, brings a bunch of type 2 diabetics, obese people, you know, people that have struggled with insulin resistance and all the other health problems associated with it. He brings them into his clinic at the University of Toronto. And sorry, let me get back into focus here. Just listen to this, okay? You think with 100 million diabetics, type 2 diabetics and pre-diabetics in the United States, this would have made headline news. Instead, nobody heard about it. In Fung's clinic at the University of Toronto, most of the patients with type 2 diabetes have a complete reversal of the disease and are off all medications in three to six months. How did he do it? Intermittent fasting. Now, I'm gonna explain exactly what Fung figured out in like, like, like everybody on this was a child, not because I, I think you guys are children, but because that's what it took, took me for, for it to click in my head, right? <clears throat> After I explain this, you'll understand insulin resistance better than 99.9% of the planet. And it's super, super simple. And this is what Fung reversed. Okay. Never quote the CDC. Lots of influencers. Okay. I'm going to answer these questions in a second. Sorry, guys. Um, let me get back to this. I've got a little itch on my nose. So. Okay, so let's describe what, what Fung figured out. The modern American diet is a problem. We are eating and snacking all day, okay? For thousands and thousands of years before we were, basically we haven't, we didn't start doing this since the night, till the 1970s. So since the 1970s, we've been eating and snacking all day. This is what our diet looks like, snacks and meals, right? Before that, for thousands of years, we were fasting and feeding, we weren't eating all day. In fact, when your grandparents came home from, from school and they asked their parents for a snack, their parents said, absolutely not. If I give you a snack after, after school, you're going to spoil your dinner. Then if before bedtime they asked for another snack, their parents said, absolutely not. You should have eaten your dinner, right? But now we're snacking all the time. So this is what happens when you, sorry guys, I'm losing my camera here. All right, this is what happens when you snack all day. And this is where we become insulin resistant by bathing in insulin. When we eat, especially a carbohydrate or a refined carbohydrate, our blood sugar spikes. That's the blue line. Blue is the glucose or blood sugar. It spikes. Now, when our blood sugar spikes, insulin, the purple line, also spikes. And insulin's job is when insulin sees glucose coming into the bloodstream, it, our, our pancreas cranks out insulin so that insulin can open the door. Right here, insulin opens the door to all of our cells. Whether it's a heart cell or a muscle cell or a liver cell, insulin will open the door to all the cells to be fed the glucose. It also opens the door to our fat cells to be fed and store glucose. Now, that causes a glucose crash. Carbohydrates, especially refined carbs, I have lupus, PCOS, and hypothyroid. I'm so glad you're watching this, a bold body eight. So, Refined carbohydrates are quickly digested. They cause the spike and then the crash. Now, when insulin levels are high, insulin has a couple of other names. It's known as the fat storage hormone. And, and, but, but when insulin is high and glucose levels are down, we feel extremely hungry. Constant hunger, cravings, snacking hunger right here. So we grab a few carrots, <clears throat> excuse me, or a few almonds or whatever, and we snack. 
This causes a blood sugar spike again. And we're spending the entire day spiking, crashing, spiking, crashing. We're hungry all day during the crashes. And look at insulin. It's elevated all day. Now, when insulin is elevated all day for a long period of time, our cells become insulin resistant. When, when they're exposed to too much insulin for too long, they become insulin resistant. This is how we become type 2 diabetic or pre-diabetic. So what Fung figured out is how about we just keep insulin levels low? And we can do that by fasting. When we're fasting, we keep insulin levels low. This is a message to the body to be burning calories, burning fat. When we're feeding, insulin levels are typically elevated, and that's a message to the body to be storing calories. Now, for thousands of years, we've been fasting and feeding, and we never had any metabolic health problems. We didn't have an obesity epidemic or a diabetes epidemic. It's when we started eating all the time. So what Fung says is he said, take all these calories, and let's put them in two meals in a day or one meal a day. Um, and if they eat twice a day, they'll still get all the calories they need. But when they're, when they're not eating and insulin levels are low, they can burn some calories from fat, right? So it looks like this. If your body burns 2,000 calories a day and your insulin levels are low, then the body can burn some fat. So it can get 1,000 calories from food, let's say, and 1,000 calories from fat. And you actually don't feel very hungry when this happens because your body is metabolizing fat. And anybody that's done some fasting knows how this works, right? Now, when we're feeding, though, and insulin levels are high, insulin blocks the body's ability to tap into fat. So even though our body burns 2,000 calories, if we're only eating 1,000 calories, the body can't get the rest of the calories from fat. And so oftentimes, our body's metabolism slows down when we're keeping insulin levels high throughout the day because it can't access this fat and it needs calories from somewhere. And if it can't get them, then it will slow down a little bit and burn fewer calories. Okay, so this is insulin resistance. This is what Fung figured out. Um, well, I mean, he didn't figure out this, but he got these type 2 diabetics on, on intermittent fasting and it reversed their disease in three to six months, right? So there was another study done, and this is the last study, and then we'll go into the protocol and the application so I can make sure I don't take too much time. There's a study done at the University of Sydney. This should have been the biggest news in the world. I mean, it was 11 years ago at the University of Sydney, and it goes back to what we were talking about before with all the carbs being packaged in fiber, right? Think of rice. Rice is supposed to be packaged in fiber. Same with wheat, same with apples, same with any fiber, any carbohydrate in nature. So we've known, and as you saw on the, the website I showed you, we've known that fiber controls glucose and insulin spikes. And we've known that diverse fiber, so if you eat lots of vegetables, fruits, plants, seeds, it's a good thing. But what's the problem with that? People have known that for decades. Knowing is one thing, doing is another one, right? Myself included. I've tried to in eat more fruits and veggies, I don't know how many times, but I've struggled to do it. So there's a company in the United States that said, let's get a super potent blend of the most effective soluble and insoluble fibers, right? And let's put them into a packet that people can simply mix up and drink before their meals. So you can do that, right? Now you don't have to do that. You can also go and before your meals, you can eat vegetables. You can do a lush garden salad. Black coffee is great for fasting. It doesn't break the fast. Uh, we'll, I'll answer some of these questions. So, so they found that this packet was like, a super salad, right? I mean, it was a, you can eat a salad of vegetables, fruits, seeds, herbs, all those things, and it will fill you up. It will control the cholesterol and the triglycerides like we talked about. It'll control the blood sugar and the insulin levels, which is key. But because people are not very compliant and because sometimes you're in the car when you're eating or you're at a friend's house and you can't always get all the fiber, that's why we're, we're struggling, right? So they, they take this packet of fiber and they say, all right, let's, let's put it in front of some real bad carbs, white bread, mashed potatoes, things like that, right? One packet reduced glucose levels by 20%. Two packets reduced glucose and insulin levels by as much as 28%. This is of critical importance to anybody who's insulin resistant, type 2 diabetic, pre-diabetic, struggles with their weight, this is of critical importance. It should have won awards. This should have been a, a big, big deal. Instead, nobody talked about it because nobody can profit off you and I eating more fiber in our diet, right? So this is what it looks like. For anybody that's watching this that is struggling with any of these things, I'm going to show you the application. You can make this work with any diet. 
any lifestyle, any schedule. You just change the fasting and feeding windows around. I'm going to show you what I do. Okay. Now you can do it with water and with vegetables and fruits and, and seeds and herbs and sources of fiber. I, in full disclosure, use a couple of, I mean, I, I've been taking this before every meal. I've shown my before and after picture. I'll show it again in here, here in a second. It's completely changed my life. If you've seen my TikTok videos, as I show you this application, this is exactly, what I'm about to show you is exactly what these people have done. So let's just look at them again, okay? Uh, if you've seen my video on Scott, if you haven't, you should see it. Type 2 diabetic for 20 years. He's lost 70 pounds off all of his prescriptions. Um, Deanna had PCOS and a bunch of other issues, prediabetes, fibromyalgia, um, high cholesterol, completely changed her life. Um, this guy, Jose, is a great guy. He's a guy in Michigan that I've never met before. I mean, not, I haven't met any of these people in person yet. Uh, I've met Scott, but he's type 2 diabetic, thyroid problems, brain fog, um, Mario saw my videos, ordered it a week later. He sent me this video message saying that he was off his metformin already. His doctor took him off the metformin. She had reversed, she reversed her prediabetes, had non-alcoholic fatty liver. I mean, I can show you a bunch of these, but there's one I'm, I'm kind of stalling for. Um, she had hyperthyroidism, insulin resistance. So I'm looking for Matt. Matt was a type two diabetic for 14 years. Okay. In 90 days, his A1C dropped like a rock. Um, and he was really, really skeptical. And so what he did is he said, I'm not going to change my diet at all. I'm not going to exercise any more than I already do. Everything's going to stay the same. And I'm going to test this protocol and this, this product, right? And it's completely changed his life. Okay, so here's how the protocol works. When I wake up, I'm fasting. Now, when you're fasting, you're not starving. You're just switching fuel sources. You're burning stored body fat for fuel, Okay. And in order to tap into fat for fuel, you have to avoid snacking because every time we snack, like Dr. Fung taught, we spike our insulin levels and that insulin blocks the fat burning. So snacking's the enemy. This is the hard part, but there's a way to make it much easier. When we're feeding, we still can enjoy good food. Like if you guys have seen my videos, I eat hamburgers and pizza and, and burritos and regular food. I have cake and ice cream at my daughter's birthday, right? But it's important to avoid glucose and insulin spikes. It's also important to avoid overeating. Now that's the hard part, but there's ways to make it much, much easier. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm fasting, burning fat for fuel. Now, then before my meals, on my meals, I have big, delicious, wonderful meals that I look forward to, but I focus on fiber pre-meal. By having fiber, whether it's a garden salad or, or a supplement, you can reduce the glucose and insulin spikes and keep those in check. This helps you burn more fat for fuel. It also helps you boost your insulin sensitivity. When insulin levels are lower instead of higher, you boost insulin sensitivity. And this is how you reverse insulin resistance is by becoming insulin sensitive again. Then for dinner, same thing again. Okay. Now, if it's not realistic or affordable for you to buy and prepare a lush garden salad before every meal, you can do what I do. I take a packet of diverse blended plant fibers. It's clinically proven. Look, you can go right here, okay? There's always a bunch of skeptics on here in the comments that I don't know if they're just trying to troll me or what, but for anybody that thinks this is some kind of a snake oil, all right, there's nothing magic about this. This is science, okay? We're on the PDR, Prescriber's Digital Reference. This is where doctors and medical professionals go to turn to, to look at prescriptions pharmaceuticals, and natural safe alternatives that have no side effects. Now, the pharmaceutical companies want you to buy prescriptions because you'll keep using them every day because they only treat the symptoms and they only do it indefinitely, or they, they do it indefinitely, right? In other words, you take a pill today to get you through today. Then tomorrow, what do you have to do to get through tomorrow? That's right, take another pill. So if you're on here and you type in a drug like metformin, for example, glipizide, um, you can look up any drug and it will show you all the different drug types. Okay, let's look up Lipitor. You can look up any drug, okay? Guess what else you can look up? You can look up Unicity Balance, okay? When you go here, guess what it's going to do? It's going to show you all the research on balance, right? It's going to show you that this is bo bona fide effective stuff. Let's read it. Uh, Unicity Balance facilitates weight loss through five distinct mechanisms. First, the soluble fiber matrix promotes an increase in satiety. Second, unicity balance improves cholesterol levels. Reduction in LDL and, and uh, reduction in LDL content removes a potent inhibitor of lipolysis. Lipolysis is fat burning. Third, unicity balance improves blood glucose levels. Appropriate serum 
glucose levels helps maintain many metabolic processes in the body. It talks about reducing insulin levels. It talks about reducing triglyceride levels, okay? It's amazing stuff. It works. It's doctors know about it, but they but you know, because it's not a pharmaceutical product, this is a natural alternative. People don't talk about it. So I take a packet of this before my meals. That keeps my glucose and insulin levels in check. It makes it much, much easier. I'm able to be compliant. When I'm fasting, I sip this, okay? I've got some of it right here, okay? This is what I fat. I sip while I fast. Let me change my can- camera around. I'm a snacker. It's been really hard for me to do intermittent fasting without cheating all the time. When I have this, I don't even think about food. It's amazing stuff. So I sip this during my fast. That keeps my insulin levels low, and it allows me to stretch my fast. Sometimes I fast overnight for, you know, until lunch, 16 hours, 18 hours, or whatever, right? So I, I, this is what I do every single day. Now, I said I'd show, like, I didn't lose any weight on it for the first three to four weight, weeks. I felt amazing, but I didn't lose weight. Then I started doing it, and in, like, or sorry, I started doing it first three to four weeks. I didn't see any results. I felt better, but didn't see any results. Then the next 11 weeks, my body totally changed, okay? Um, all the stories on my, on my TikTok profile, if you guys have seen my TikTok profile, right? This is my TikTok profile. Just a guy addicted to delicious food who's trying to stay healthy. Let me just put something out here to some of the haters in my comments right now. I'm not a bodybuilder. I don't aspire to be a bodybuilder. Um, I'm not, um, you know, I don't have any interest in being keto. If keto works for you, I'm happy for you. I like carbs too much. Um, I don't have any interest in being vegan. If vegan works for you, I'm super happy for you. Vegan's awesome for a lot of people. I like meat too much. I'm a guy who likes food. Thanks for the the sticker. I'm a guy who likes food a little bit too much and always has. And so I've yo-yoed with my weight and my health my entire life. My dad died of things that are directly related to insulin resistance. It was a problem for his, him his, his entire life. He had lots of stress in his life. He had a little bit of heartbreak in his life. He had food was, was his, what he turned to. And I'm a lot like my dad, okay? And so um, all what I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to become you know, Muscle Man USA or Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I also don't want to be insulin resistant or, or pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic. All these stories, this is a doctor talking about balance. He's talking about this and how his patients are doing better on it than any of the, met, uh, the diabetic prescriptions he had put them on. You can see these pin videos right here. They're amazing. You should watch them, okay? So um, I've got a link here on my bio. You can see it. If you can't see it, I'll show you this. The link has a discount code where if anybody wants, you don't, again, you don't have to get the supplements but it makes it much, much easier. And they're, it's fully guaranteed. There's no sn- snake oil. It's pure science. So the company says anybody that tries it for 90 days, it's going to work for you. And if it doesn't work for you, or if you're not satisfied for any reason, they'll give you all your money back. Okay. So they, they do a discount. Once you get the discount, you lock in the discount for life and you get a 90 day money back guarantee. Here's honestly, let me just explain the, the approach to this. Okay. If you are, oh, sorry, I'm trying to flip my camera. If you are struggling with obesity, type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance, high cholesterol, you have PCOS for women, you have low testosterone for men, if you know that part of your problem is that we've been eating too much, too often, we've eaten too much junk, processed foods, and we haven't gotten enough fiber, if, if we have these problems, and if we're taking medications or treatment, or maybe we're not doing anything about it, but if we're taking it and we know that that's just getting us through day to day and it's just treating the symptoms, this is an opportunity to attack the root cause. And in 90 days, your life could look totally differently. And don't expect it to change your life in 10 days. I mean, sometimes like you hear Mario, right? Was off his metformin in a week. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for people that have fast results, but most of the time it takes a little bit of time. Be consistent. Use it properly and it will not let you down. If you're unsatisfied for any reason, get a refund. No doctor, no prescription drug, no whatever will ever let you get your money back if what they tell you to do doesn't work. This will work for you. And if you're unsatisfied for any reason, you can get a refund. Okay, I'm gonna get to some comments now. I'm not ignoring anybody, but okay. What was the drink while fasting? The drink while fasting is called Unamate. Unamate is a bunch of, it's food-based product. It comes from Yerba Mate plant. It's a super concentrated blend or super concentrated extract of chlorogenic acid. What is chlorogenic acid? 
It's the nectar of the gods as far as I'm concerned. Look up chlorogenic acid, the health benefits of chlorogenic acid, okay? Chlorogenic acid is what people like about coffee. They think they like the caffeine. They think the caffeine gives them energy. Caffeine doesn't give us energy. Caffeine turns off a signal in our brain that tells us we're tired. Energy comes from carbs and fat. Co coffee has neither, okay? What coffee has in it that is so magical is chlorogenic acid, which is a polyphenol. It's a very, very powerful compound. And if you look up chlorogenic acid, it naturally reduces blood pressure. It's amazing for blood pressure. It also is an amazing appetite suppressant. When you drink chlorogenic acid, you don't feel like snacking. You don't feel hungry. It boosts insulin sensitivity. There's really, really cool science on it. Uh, Vladdy Guerrero Jr., the number two player in MLB, uh, during the off season, he got really out of shape. And he did the exact protocol I'm talking about with, with the balance and the Unimate. Lost like 40 pounds, got in shape right in time for the season to start. Now the whole Blue Jays are drinking Unimate. The Astros are drinking Unimate. The, I think it's the Red Sox is the other team that's doing it. It's amazing stuff. You can concentrate. You don't feel distracted by food all day. Food speaks to me like a devil on my shoulder all day and it has my whole life. I wake up and I think, what am I going to eat today? What do I want for dinner? Where am I going to go eat? That's like my favorite thing to think about. I don't think about it with Unimonte. Okay, side effects from the drinks. Does it bloat you? Does it make you move bowels? Okay, good question. And for people asking about the products, if you want to read more about them, you can screenshot this. Okay, I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. If you don't want to screenshot it, you can just go to my TikTok profile. But depending on your settings, sometimes you might not be able to see links in people's bios. This is my TikTok profile, Trenty Talk, right? Okay. Does it help with acid reflux? Yes, I can't. Almost everybody that has acid reflux, that's one of the first things they say is my acid reflux is gone. That's weird. Okay, but this is not meant to cure anything, guys. I'm not saying this cures anything. I'm just saying a lot of people with acid reflux say that it goes away. Okay, question was, is any of it harmful? Is it safe? It's completely safe. There's no side effects. There's no drug interactions. Completely safe. It's food-based products. There's no medication in it. Fiber may cause some things. If you're not used to a high fiber diet and all of a sudden, so our ancestors ate over a hundred grams of fiber per day. Nowadays, the modern American eats 12 grams of fiber per day. And this is why we have a diabetes and obesity epidemic. It's easy. You can connect the dots. I just showed you guys that for those that were here for that, I showed you on the CDC's website. They already know it's exactly what the problem is. So when you add fiber, a few things might happen. It's rare, but a few things might happen. You might have a little bit of gas, right? which is fine for me, but not very pleasant for other people, I guess, around me. You might have a little bit of gas. Sometimes people have a little bit of constipation or, um, or diarrhea even, just depending on where you're at in that process. You cut, you cut down to half a packet. You reduce the amount you're taking, and then you gradually scale up if you have any of that, and it goes away. Um, fiber, so you, our gut, some people can't have fiber, or they think they can't have fiber because they have a gut condition, right? And fiber is exactly what their gut needs. So it's like having a hurt knee, right? Like your knee's hurt, you got surgery on it, you need to rehab it, and it's a little bit painful to rehab it. Now, if you just go run on it, you'll ruin your knee. Same thing with your gut. So what you have to do is you have to like swim or, or do an elliptical machine and lightly add weight to your knee, and then eventually you're good to go and it's as good as new. Same thing with your gut and fiber. Good question. Okay. <clears throat> Is it available in Australia? It is available in Australia. And I actually heard that the manufacturer is reducing the price in, in Australia sometime around the end of the year. But yeah, it is available in Australia and it's amazing. I have a lot of people in Australia that have been using it and they love it. Can your body make fiber naturally? It cannot. Fiber comes from plants. So vegetables, fruits, um, seeds, herbs, and every type of fiber is a little bit different. There's two categories of fiber, uh, soluble and insoluble, but there's over 20,000 Sorry, there's 20,000 different types of edible plants that we've identified, and we only eat about 200 of them. And the average American gets almost all of their fiber from only four of them, wheat, corn, rice, and potatoes. So we need more diversity of fiber in our diet, and that's part of the problem. Can I still drink coffee while taking this? Yes. Is it available in Israel? It's not available in Israel yet, but we figured out a way to get it to Israel. So you can message me or, or shoot me an email. Um... What about hypertension and high blood pressure? When you lose weight, it usually helps a lot with hypertension and blood pressure. But the chlorogenic acid in Unimate is fantastic for lowering blood pressure naturally. If, if you want to read about that, um, just go to Google and type in 
chlorogenic acid for reducing blood pressure, right? This has 375 times as much chlorogenic acid as yerba mate does and way more than coffee does, way more than anything. And that's why it's, like I said, the nectar of the gods. Okay. Okay. In the US, they've removed fiber from our foods. You can make your own food. Trent, I just started. My cravings are gone. I'm down 14 pounds and my blood pressure is normal. Melody Joy. Love you, Melody Joy. I'm so happy for you. Thanks for making that comment. I'm so happy for you. Oh, does alcohol have fiber? No. Does it have any anti-inflammatory effects? So yeah, let's, let's talk about that real fast because a lot of people want to know about that kind of stuff. So we're not going to talk about, we're going to talk about something else, but we're going to get to anti-inflammatory. So, all right. So this is our brain, right? Well, this is what scientists call our second brain. Okay, it's our gut. And in our gut, there are 39 trillion bacteria or more. And these bacteria have everything to do with our health. There are hundreds of studies being done about the link between brain number one and brain number two. Now, thousands, a thousand plus years ago, Hippocrates said all disease begins in the gut. And that is looking extremely prophetic now because modern scientists are studying and finding that poor gut health is linked to a bunch of problems, including depression, anxiety, and even food addiction. Okay, so in our gut, there are trillions of these bacteria. Some of them are good and some of them are pathogens or, or aren't, aren't very good. But the key is to have diversity, okay? Think of your gut like an ecosystem where they're like a zoo, okay? There's lots of different types of animals and they don't all eat the same thing. If you were a zookeeper and you tried to feed the lions and the giraffes bananas, it wouldn't work. Now, the monkeys are happy on bananas, but what about the lions and giraffes? Now, we have 30,000 plus species of bacteria in our gut, and most Americans are only feeding them four different types of food, potatoes, wheat, corn, and um, potatoes, wheat, corn, and rice. That's the only fiber that most Americans eat, which is terrible. And so that's no wonder why we have a condition called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is all kinds of digestive problems. We get di constipation, diarrhea, we get gas, we get IBS. IBS, gut problems always lead to mental problems. So while one in five people in the United States have IBS, we also have a mental health crisis in the United States with anxiety and depression. Where does it start? Right here, right? So if your brain controls your body, what controls your brain? Your gut, okay? And this is not just some, you know, pseudoscience or whatever, like, this is how it works. Okay, I'll, I'll show a diagram. We, we know exactly how it works. There's a big nerve called the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve connects the brain to the gut. There's 500 million different neuro, like nerves or, or neuro, sorry, there are 500 different nerve connections here where our gut is sending messages back and forth with our brain. Okay, and if we have a healthy gut, it helps us have healthy neurotransmitters. What are neurotransmitters? Okay, neurotransmitters are things like serotonin. Serotonin is the happy hormone, they call it, or the happy neurotransmitter. When we have lots of serotonin, we don't feel depressed. When we don't, guess what? We feel depressed. 95% of serotonin is produced, guess where? The gut, okay? It helps with our mood. It helps with our, right? But it's also affecting our metabolic health. So when you have a diversity of plants in your diet, lots of fiber, which is where fiber comes from is plants. When you have a diversity of, of plants in your diet, you you have great metabolic health, right? The problem is we don't all do this. It's hard. It's inconvenient. It doesn't fit the modern diet. When we don't have a diversity of plants, we're not as healthy, okay? So here's this, here's where people get stuck, Okay, because we have poor gut health, and this is not an individual problem, guys. This isn't like, oh man, we all just need more willpower. We all need to eat less and exercise more. Okay, if we all know that, then why is it easy for some people and difficult for others, right? Could it be that the microbes in our gut are influencing our cravings and our impulses? Yes, there's hundreds of studies that have been done on it, okay? So here's what happens. When we have poor gut health, it leads to more poor mental health. When we and, and, and the poor mental health can have a lot of different forms, right? It might not be anxiety and depression, but it leads to really poor dietary choices, which leads to poor gut health. And so you get stuck in this cycle. Well, when people start eating more fiber, guess what? Everything changes. So inflammation, 
that was the original question. We'll come full circle here, right? Instead of this, which is what all of us eat, God and mother nature actually made rice like this. This is what it really looks like. The rice is covered in fiber. The bran is the fiber. We only eat the endosperm. Now there's also outside of the bran, there's a husk and a hole, and those are usually covered in pesticides and those are rightly tossed. But the bran, and if you can go to any grocery store and you ask for wild rice, this is what you'll get. And it's got fiber and it's way, way better for us, okay? But food makers take a product, they take a plant, they remove the fiber, the good stuff, and they make products like this for us. Okay, this is not good for our gut. Products like this lead to more inflammation. Apple, remove the fiber, sugar water, right? Even sugar cane itself, any carbohydrate, any carb in nature, any sugar in nature always comes packaged in fiber. But we remove it and make stuff like this. We already talked about this. I won't go through it, but CDC, okay? I don't always reference the CDC, but let's just go with it because this is short and succinct. They know that if you have fiber in your diet, if you have diabetes or prediabetes, fiber is your friend because it helps control blood sugar and insulin levels. It helps with weight management. It reduces your risk of heart disease, which is the number one killer in the United States. Guess what the other killers are, top killers? Cancers, right? Fiber helps with all that. Fiber helps control blood sugar, protects your heart, helps your digestive health. It helps improve gut health. It lowers cholesterol. It lowers triglycerides. It's amazing for weight management. Why? Because it fills you up. You can't overeat when you have fiber. Think about eating five, think about eating three apples before eating pizza. You're not going to eat very many slices of pizza when you've had three apples first, right? It's because of the fiber. Remove the fiber. You've got apple juice. It takes three large apples to make just one cup of apple juice. Drink this. 30 minutes later, you'll be even more hungry for pizza. The difference is the fiber. The fiber reduces the glucose and insulin spikes and crashes. Well, if we know all this stuff and we connect the dots, we realize this leads to all the problems we have in America. We have a diabetic we have a diabetes epidemic. We have an obesity epidemic. We have a mental health epidemic. We have all these problems and it all links back here. Now, because there's not a pharmaceutical company that can patent fiber, nobody cares to talk about it. Instead, what they want to do is they want to give us stuff to treat the symptoms. Oh, you've got cravings. You've got migraines. You've got fatigue. Let me give you a pill. You've got PCOS. You're insulin resistant, right? You've got brain fog, anxiety, depression. You can't lose weight. You've got psoriasis. You've got skin tags. You've got all these problems, high blood pressure. Here's a pill. I'm not saying these medications aren't life-saving. Some of them are. But if, if, if the treatments are meant to treat the symptoms, we're going to be using the treatments indefinitely because tomorrow we're going to need another pill and the day after that, right? So everything I've talked about, and I'm not going to go through it again, but we address the root cause, the insulin resistance. And when you address the insulin resistance, then all the, the symptoms can take care of themselves, right? Okay, I'm going to get back to questions. That was a, a long-winded answer to a very good question. Sorry about that. All right. Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to try it. Excited to start. Thank you. And Soria, you won't be uh, disappointed. Now, you'll get an email from me with all the instructions for best use. And the manufacturer, the one that gives the guarantee on it, they will give you a call, a coaching call, a free coaching call, and walk you through the protocol, make sure you know exactly what to do, how to fit it with your lifestyle, your diet, your everything, and it is absolutely a game changer. You guys saw my before and after. Um, that before actually wasn't even at my worst because who takes a picture of themselves half naked at their worst, right? But um, you've seen all the videos on my TikTok. It, it's incredible. Um, it's truly amazing. Um, okay, I, I'm trying to catch up. These questions are coming in a little bit hot for me. Uh, Matt, uh, 063, if you're doing feel great system, you probably don't need the life fiber. The life fiber is a fantastic thing. Thank you for the roses. That's nice. I don't think this is like, I've never been gifted before. Um, then you probably don't need it, but it's great. I just bought it and I feel way better with before with more energy. Thank you so much for sharing that. Does it have a pro or prebiotic in it? If not, does, does it need repl replace needing them? So yeah, so, uh, a prebiotic is fiber. 
And this is a blend of different plant fibers. And so when you get those plant fibers from this blend, that's a, a diverse source of fibers. Now you should always try to eat more vegetables, fruits, seeds, herbs, things like that, right? But sometimes it's not gonna be realistic. And so this is amazing for it. This is a prebiotic. Now, when you think of prebiotics versus probiotics, let's just explain that for everybody listening. A probiotic, a probiotic is this, okay? A probiotic is actually a living organism. When you take something with probiotics or you, you eat food that has probiotics in it, you're getting actual bacteria. They're living organisms. They're not human cells. They're little aliens that are inside every one of us. There's trillions of them, okay? There's actually more bacteria cells, more non-human cells in us than there are human cells. We're more non-human than we are human, okay? So probiotics adds more bacteria. When you take 5 billion probiotic cells in one of those probiotic supplements, you're dropping these in. But, but <clears throat> if you don't have prebiotics, so what do probiotics need to thrive and do their job? They need food. And what probiotics eat are prebiotics. Probiotics eat fiber. Fiber is a prebiotic. So if you have a lot of fiber in your diet, the probiotics are fed and they can do their job. Howdy. Okay. Would a coffee with cream and stevia break the fast in the morning? Yeah, the cream usually does it. Sugar does it too. Stevia is not a problem. Um, but, but yeah, that will break the fast. You, if The unamate doesn't break the fast. Anything under 15 calories usually won't break the fast for these purposes. Now, if you're fasting for like healing and autophagy and things like that, then, then you can go water only. I've done five-day unamate and water only fast. No, no food whatsoever, no vitamins or whatever. Amazing. I should be doing it every month. I love it. Okay, more questions. Uh, yeah, it's about $5 a day for all the supplements, which is more than I was spending on breakfast and snacks and junk food and sparkling water and crap anyways. So I just redirected the funds and came out on top. And then, like I said, try it for 90 days. If you hate it, if it doesn't, it's not your cup of tea, get a refund. But if you use it consistently and just use it properly, it won't let you down. Okay. Thanks for the gifts, guys. Fiber against SIBO. Okay, so SIBO, read the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolsovich. It's amazing. He talks all about it. You've really got to start slowly and gra gradually scale up, but it's really the only way to get it better. Like if I go out in the sun with my white pasty skin, I get sunburned, right? If I go out there for an hour. But if I go out there for five minutes and then tomorrow seven and then 15 and then 30, eventually I build up a base town. I can be out, or base tan. I could be outside all day and be fine and not get sunburned. That's the same thing with our gut. Sometimes you got to gradually scale it up. Okay. Hey, Trent. Oh, hi, Corey. All right. Let me see what other ones. Please let us know your credentials. Guess what? I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm actually an earth science. Uh, yeah, I was a geography major. Um, I got really into this when my dad got diagnosed with colon cancer. I went down a huge rabbit hole and I started studying everything. When my dad got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, it was metastatic cancer. Um, I mean, it was already in his liver and his lungs. And um, I knew that I was on the same path. Um, my wife also got di diagnosed with prediabetes. And I just, I, I don't, I like to challenge the system a little bit. And any time where I go into somewhere and I have a problem, like imagine you were going in with a house problem and you went to a hardware store and you've got this leak that just like, it's causing damage. I mean, if this thing, if this leak keeps up, it's going to ruin your house. It'll ruin your life, right? And you go into the hardware store and instead of fixing the problem and sending out a plumber to fix the problem properly and address the root cause of the leak, they say, you know what? Here's a bowl, put it under it and then just change it out every day. Every day you got to put that bowl there. And if you forget or if the leak accelerates, you might die. It's like, I'm not going to live my life like that. Absolutely not. Let's get in here. Let's fix the leak and enjoy life again, right? And so I like the idea of attaching things at their root, the insulin resistance. Now, the narrative for a long time on, on type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, PCOS, all these things is there's nothing you can do about it. If you've got it, you're, you're screwed, right? Take these medicines, inject insulin, and deal with it. Hundreds of people, thousands of people, I mean, I, I don't know what the number is, are reversing their type 2 diabetes now every single day. So we know that that ain't it. Now, it doesn't fit the narrative because that means that 
they're well and good. Now, a lot of doctors want that. Doctors are great people. My doctor is one of the best men that I know, and he would love to help people get well. But a doctor trained in medicine is going to prescribe medicine to to treat the symptoms. And this is a way to attack the root cause. So, okay. Um, And by the way, everything I share on my TikTok videos, everything I share is from people way smarter than me. Um, You know, Jason Fung should win a Nobel Prize or whatever, okay? Um, you know, when I, when I look at Dr. Will Bolshevich, where I recommended read the book, fiber fueled, read the book life in the fasting lane. It is okay. This, this, I don't mean this to be condescending. I'm not going to say you, I'm going to say we, because I'm with you. Okay. We for the last 50 years have been snacking and eating all day. Most people eat three or six meals a day right now. And for thou and for the last 50 years, we now have an obesity epidemic, a, a diabetes epidemic, a mental health epidemic, and all these problems. The other thing that's happened for the last 50 years is food makers have been taking all the fiber out of our food. And as I've showed three times now, there's an un, I mean, it's crystal clear what fiber does, what its function is. And when you remove the fiber and you eat all day processed non-fibrous foods, we're going to get fat. We're going to get diabetes. We're going to be unhealthy. And that's exactly what's happened. For thousands of years before it, we were fasting and feeding all the time. Now, just two or three days ago, I got a call from a loved one. She said, hey, I went and talked to my doctor, holistic doctor or something like that. I forget. Doesn't want me fasting. Says that if I do intermittent fasting, it's going to ruin my hormones and blah, 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 blah. She said that it's going to ruin my metabolism because if you're not eating regularly throughout the day, your metabolism will go down so far that it doesn't matter what you eat, you're going to put on weight and get it's going to get out of hand, out of control. And I'm sure the doctor meant well, but they're simply wrong. I mean, if that was the case, then thousands of years ago, when we were all fasting and feeding all the time, not by choice, we would have all been a bunch of really, really obese people that are completely out of control. But we never had that problem, right? That wasn't a problem. It's only been a problem in the last 50 years. So it works very, very well. Um, It works every time when people do it properly. All right, everybody's awesome. Oh, I love y'all. Um, does black coffee with MCT oil break a fast? Typically, the MCT has a lot of calories in it. I mean, the calories are coming from pure fat, so you're probably going to continue. You're, you'll remain in ketosis. But yeah, instead of burning your body fat for fuel, you're going to burn the fat in the MCT oil for fuel. That's for sure. But then you'll go back to burning fat because you're going to remain in ketosis. Uh, can you do a YouTube video on this? I actually have a bunch of stuff being moved to YouTube, but yeah, I will do a long one here. High fructose corn syrup should be illegal. I like it. Sari fairy. Uh, all right. You guys are awesome. Uh, last, last, last thing for everybody that's asking, if you didn't see this, this is my TikTok page. It's called Trenty talk. Um, I've got a link right here on my TikTok page for people that want to read more that want to try it. Um, some people can't see the link in my TikTok page. So let me take you back to my embarrassing before and after photo. And um, you can screenshot it. If you can't see it on my page, you can screenshot this. You can order it. It comes with the lowest possible price and the guarantee. Five, four, you can screenshot this. If you've got your can- your phone up, screenshot that, go to the link. When you go to the link, this is what it looks like. Oops, I'm in a PowerPoint, not in my bio. Go to the link. It will ask you which country you're in. Um, when you choose your country, it'll bring it up. As soon as you bring it up, come on now. It'll say, welcome to the feel great system. It'll talk all about the products. You can read all about them here. Um, they talk about the, you know, some of the, uh, a sample fasting schedule. When you click buy now, it has a discount and, uh, you get the discount code locked in forever. You can choose your flavor and all that. Again, you don't have to do it with this, but it makes it much, much easier and it's totally guaranteed. So what do you have to lose? Okay. Becoming Michelle Mara, uh, Garden of Life Fiber Supplement. Um, okay, I've tried it. I think it's a really, really good one. I think there's better ones, but it's way better than Metamucil. It's that, that Garden of Life one you're talking about, way better than Metamucil, way, way better than, you know, Citrusel or friggin', uh, what is it called? Benafiber, any of those. Garden of Life's better. I mean, the ones I'm talking about are better than Garden of Life, but that's a good one. Promoting on here can get you banned. 
Promoting what? Benefiber. Okay, what about Benefiber? I think Benefiber should be illegal personally because it's pure wheat dextrin and it doesn't seem to do any of the function. I think it's really good marketing and it's a really low price. Um, I suppose wheat dextrin is better than anything, better than nothing. But um, I'm my mindset's always been like, I'd rather spend $15 on something that works than $9 on something that doesn't, right? And that's kind of my take on that. Um, and by the way, guys, I'm not sponsored, okay? I'm not like, it's not like I get paid to be on live twice a week. I don't have that. I would If somebody wants to pay me to be on live, that sounds great. Um, none of my videos were like, hey, make this post, we'll give you 500 bucks or even $1, okay? I don't have that. So, okay. Chicory roots, very good source of fiber. All right, everybody. Love you. Um, hope you love it. Have a great night.